Hello everybody and welcome to a new video from the series Home Studio Build. For those who don't know me, my name is Leonardo and I have been documenting the process to build this studio and make it a better place to work. Today we will be talking about acoustic absorption. More specifically I will tell you how I built these panels, the effect they had in this very room and why you need them. Ready? Let's get into it. The most important tool for treating acoustically a room is to have absorption. I'm sure that you know very well and that you have seen many times those small acoustic panels that many people use for their home studios. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with them, but they cover a very narrow frequency band and is actually very high. So that doesn't really address the problem on a higher scale level. For that, what you really need is broadband absorption meaning absorption on a broader frequency range. How do you achieve that? By using more absorption material. This means that first of all, the thickness of your panels has to be higher. And secondly, the density of the material that you're using to absorb has to be higher. The higher the density and the higher the thickness of the panels, the lower the frequencies that you will be able to control. Of course, in small rooms, you will never be able to completely get rid of the problems in the base frequencies but you will get an improvement and if you manage to learn the room well enough you might be even able to overcome that problem. Another thing to take into account with absorption is although it does matter where you place it the most important is the amount that you use. So a couple of panels placed in the right place yeah they will do something but it's probably not enough you will need to put as much as possible in the corners in the ceiling, in the walls. There is of course the limitation of the amount of space that you have in your room. The bigger the space, the better, as a general rule. So you have to be a little bit creative on how and where you place your acoustic panels. But you might be asking yourself why you need acoustic absorption. Is it for you? Do you really need it? Is it really necessary? Well, by definition, every room that has walls has a reverberation problem. This means that the sound keeps bouncing from one wall to another and it creates that muddiness, that effect. It can really mask what you're hearing, eliminating the clarity that you need to properly understand the music that you're working on. Basically, the way it works is that whenever a wave hits a panel, part of it gets absorbed and the energy from the wave is transformed into heat inside of the panel. Don't worry, it is not too much heat, it will not burn anything. So when that wave bounces back from the panel, its energy level is much lower and it's less likely to keep bouncing in the room and create those reverberation effects. If you take all those effects combined, the overall result is the reduction in what is called the reverberation time of a room. But that's enough talk. Let me show you how I build my panels and how can you do it yourself. So I would say that the only tool that you need for this is a stapler because all you have to do is to actually um, staple the, the fabric to the frames. But in my case, I also had to help myself with a hammer uh, because uh, yeah, it's not a very good stapler and, and the, the wood was very hard as well. Uh, I had to work on the floor because I don't have a working bench. I am assuming you don't have one either. First thing, if you are using the same configuration as, as I am, make sure that you pre-drill the holes that you're going to use for the hooks to the walls because then it's going to be much more difficult with the fabric uh, on the way of, of, of the drill. That is, that's basically it. So we will start by stapling the fabric to the back of the frame. No much to it, just make sure that to keep some tension. Secondly, we're going to start cutting the corners of the insulation material so that it fits nicely in our frame. You just basically lay one in the top of the other and then start stapling the fabric to the front. This is a very long and boring process so take your time, be patient and be ready to improve and learn on the way because the first one is never gonna be as good as the last one. Lastly, all that's left to do is to screw the hooks by hand through the fabric into the holes that we have pre-drilled before. And that's it! Congratulations, you have built your very first broadband absorber!
So let's go now to the interesting part of this analysis, meaning what has this absorption done to the acoustics of my room? Well, what, what you're seeing right now is a measurement that I've taken on January 13th when there was no acoustic treatment whatsoever in this room. This is a bit difficult to understand right now because it is not smooth, so let me help you out a little bit. Yeah, this looks better. As you can see, there are lots of resonances in the mid frequencies and uh, some problems in the bass. After I have installed the acoustic absorbers, I've taken the measurements again, and this is how it looks like now. It seems not much has changed, and that is true. The resonances seem to be the same. It actually has even gotten a bit worse here in the middle lows. So you might be wondering if this, uh, if this is a good sign or not. Well, definitely it's not. it's not. It's not something good that has happened here. This is not giving us the full picture because all that we see here is information related to frequency. We also have to look at time. And for that, we have a very nice graphic that is called the waterfall graphic. And this is basically a representation of all the frequencies and how they change in time. So as you can see in the back, we have zero milliseconds up to 300 milliseconds and how those frequencies have evolved in time, how they have decayed. As you can see, there are many of those frequencies that even decay after 300 milliseconds. It's actually quite a lot. Our aim for a room of this kind should be between 100 and 300 milliseconds for most of the frequencies and of course the bass will always be a little bit of a problem. So this was before treatment and this was after treatment. As you can see, the difference is huge. We still have here a few frequencies and here a little bit of combing decaying after 300 milliseconds, but overall the improvement is undeniable. It seems that all the energy has been transferred to the base because that is actually the most difficult part to absorb. But the good news is that we can target these frequencies here with uh, resonators and hopefully improve this region a little bit more. It is still a very long way to go. Uh, this is not a process that you do once. This is uh, an iterative process. It has to be done several times. You have to try out several things and, and hopefully uh, and step by step, we will be smoothing this curve and shaping it into something more reasonable. But as a first step and out of uh, just one type of acoustic treatment, I think this is a very good result. So, Although the intention of this video is to show everyone how easy it is to build your own panels, I can understand that this is not for everybody as well. And not because they are not useful, because they are. It's the process itself. If I were you, I would consider which parts of the process to outsource, because you might not have all the tools or all the expertise. I did that myself. As I explained, I asked my good friend Carl to build the frames for me and I would take care of the rest since I could do it in my own place. But it might be different for you. Anyway, if you have any questions or if you would like to know more about it or again, just to engage into some conversation, hit me up and let me know what you think. I will be glad to talk to you. I will ask you to give me a like if you have enjoyed this video and to stay tuned because there is more coming on how I built my studio. Next week there will be a video about acoustic diffusion and I think you might like it. So, see you next week and thank you for watching.